There it is. Come on. Breathe. You got it. Come on. Come on, Caroline. Come on. Come on. Try hard. Okay. Stick with it. Right there. Yes. Yeah. Oh my God. Fuck yeah. Yes. All right. <laughs> Welcome back to the Boulder Blog. You can probably tell that Caroline recently achieved her low key goal of sending a V7 before her three year climb anniversary. And that makes this a really special video. But the title is a little clickbaity because there's really no guarantee that anything in this video will help you send V7. I mean, you might be climbing V2 or you might be climbing V10, like I have no idea. We're gonna share three areas that Caroline focused on that I believe made her first three years of climbing so successful. But before we get to that, a few months ago, I put out the video when Caroline sent her first V6 and some dude with probably a huge commented on that video about how it was so long to take three years to send V6 and how he did it so much faster. So if you sent V10 in like nine months, this is your cue to stop watching the video. For everyone else, I hope you get something out of it. Okay, so I've been climbing for about three years now. I started climbing in November of 2021. Kind of a combination of a gym climber and an outdoor climber. Over time, sort of gradually trending towards more and more bouldering. I met Caroline on probably her second or third day of climbing at Vertical Endeavors in Glendale Heights, Illinois. And since then, we've done a lot of our climbing together, both indoors and outdoors. Right off the bat, there's one thing that I think she did that got her on the right track and led to quick development, especially in her first year. Climb with more experienced climbers. This one should be obvious, but climbing with somebody more experienced than you can be incredibly valuable. Improve your technique by watching what they do on the wall. Ask for feedback after failed attempts. Pick up tactics for conserving energy and even avoiding injuries. When Caroline joined the crew, the rest of us had already been climbing for a couple of years, over which time we had learned a little bit of technique and made a whole lot of mistakes. My dad always says that you could accomplish a whole lot more if you learn from the mistakes and advice of others, rather than insisting on learning it yourself the hard way. Easier said than done, but I think this applies to climbing progression as well. Monkey see, monkey do, monkey climb as well as you. Well, that's a great rhyme for year one, but in year two, I should probably start training, right? Have you done any training recently, Caroline? That's something that has sort of evolved for me too. I used to be like very into training at the gym, both the climbing gym and at like Planet Fitness. Training can mean just about anything, so let me make a distinction between two types real quick. Don't get too hung up on this, it's only for the purpose of this discussion. First type of training is geared towards climbing strength. Pull-ups, weighted pull-ups, Finger boards, max hangs, campus board, lock off training. In my opinion, this is all totally unnecessary in your first few years of climbing. This is mostly because the tendons, ligaments, and other connective tissues in your fingers, elbows, and shoulders, the most commonly injured places on a climber, take several years to adapt and get stronger. If you train for strength early on, your muscles will get stronger quickly, but it'll likely lead to connective tissue injuries, especially if you just add it on top of your other climbing, your body needs time to rest. The second type of training is geared towards injury prevention. Strength exercises for the extensors, elbows, shoulders, posterior chain and core. Prehab and rehab exercises for the fingies. If you're climbing hard and trying to push your grade, I think these exercises become really important in your second year. But just adding in these exercises may not be enough to prevent injury, the biggest enemy of a climber looking to advance. Remember, your body needs rest. I know that at some point I'm, I'm gonna have to get back into more of like a structured training as I advance, but right now it's just been great to like get outside, let nature be my hangboard, uh, my training ground. I feel like I'm a lot stronger of a hiker carrying up all our pads and our gear. At the moment, Caroline isn't doing either type of training, but I think the reason that she's getting away without any injury prevention training right now is because she went to the non-climbing gym regularly 
for I don't know how long, at least the whole year and a half or so that we were roommates in Chicago. And over that time, she built up a nice base level of strength in the elbows, shoulders, core, and posterior chain. The level of strength she already built up is more easily maintained by just bouldering and hiking in the pads and maintaining a generally active lifestyle. Now that I think about it, Caroline was really a lot fitter than your average person before she even started climbing so she can probably get away with a little less injury prevention, at least in the short term. Year three, time to get your priorities straight. If you haven't figured this out yet by year three, you're probably in for some trouble, but if you just climb every day, you will get injured. Even if a lot of the climbing is easy and on jugs, there's plenty of injuries that are made worse by climbing on jugs. Therefore, you have to prioritize what's most important. I can only have one project day a week. That's what I had to cut back down to instead of like two or three projecting days a week. Since you're watching this video, you either love me, hi mom, or you want to climb as hard as you can. In that case, I would highly recommend prioritizing limit bouldering, preferably outdoors or on a system board, but standard gym boulders will work as well. Here's why. Thanks to incredible free online resources from people like coach Eric Hurst, I know that there are two really important concepts for you to understand if you want to climb as hard as possible in the long term. I already explained the first concept. Muscles get stronger faster than other connective tissues in the body. Those tissues need time, normally years, to catch up and get stronger in order to avoid injury. The second concept is that of energy systems. Honestly, this topic is way more complicated than I should cover and definitely in this video, but here are the spark notes. There are three methods or systems that your body uses constantly to provide energy to your muscles in order to perform various types of work. The first energy system can provide a low amount of energy for a long period of time. Think about activities like running a marathon, doing exercises of 20, 30, or more reps, and easy trad or sport multi-pitch climbing that goes on for many minutes at a time. With consistent focus, this energy system can see improvements long into your 50s, 60s, and maybe even 70s. The second energy system can provide medium-high amounts of energy for a medium amount of time. Think about activities like the 400 meter sprint, maybe a wrestling match of like two to four minutes, and sustained sport climbing or long pumpy bouldering that lasts up to a few minutes at a time. This energy system can only improve so much and you typically max out the training benefits after just one or two months of focused training. The last energy system can provide short bursts of maximal energy. Think about activities like a one rep max, 100 meter sprint, or short, intense bouldering. This system takes a really long time to see improvement, and it gets harder and harder to improve as you get older. But with a consistent focus over years or better decades, there is a lot of room to improve this energy system. Whatever age you are, bolder now while you're still young, and you can still make gains in your max strength. The stronger you are here, the easier you make it for yourself across the board. With an increase in max strength, the same climbing moves will make you less pumped and are less likely to take you to failure, and harder moves become possible. Since this energy system has the opportunity to be improved greatly, but the shortest time window to do so, get it done while the getting's good. Now hopefully you're thinking to yourself, wait a minute, there is so much more to climbing than just strength, which is absolutely true. Climbing is first and foremost a technical sport, so improving your technique is likely the quickest way to improve your overall climbing or increase your sendable grade. However, as long as you are alive, you can still keep improving your technique. There is no time window or restriction on that. And if you're mostly bouldering outside like I prefer, you're building a whole lot of technique right alongside physical strength. I'd probably say within the last year, we've almost been exclusively bouldering. I've done a couple of multi-pitch trips, which have been fun, done a couple of trad climbing trips, but on a day-to-day -day basis and most weekends, we're definitely getting out and bouldering a lot, which has been great. I'd say moving to Colorado has been life-changing from a like a climbing perspective because now we're 15 minutes away from climbing less time than what we were doing when we were climbing out in in the midwest and what it took to get to even a gym and so that really like opened up a lot for us outside for sure hitting places like three sisters clear creek a lot independence pass telluride this time last year i was still projecting v3s and to now in this last month send my first B7. I feel like that's, that's been a lot to, to cover in a year. Um, I 
think about the progress that I've made uh, sending my first V6 Joy stand. That was an amazing uh, milestone for sure. But then it was also, it opened up the possibility of maybe sending my first V7 Joy Sit, which just adds a couple moves to the boulder. It, it wasn't necessarily adding uh, a V7 move to the start, but causing like the V6 to, it's something you're entering with a pump. The, the moves at the, the start, they're big, powerful, require a lot, and I don't have a ton of goes on it. Uh, before I start to get tired or sloppy. I think being on Joy Stand sort of is what started this finger tweak for me and it was kind of on and off and maybe not giving it as much rehab as I should have. So that was something that was kind of in the mix with Joy Sit because I was now re-aggravating it in a new way. I don't know what the science or magic uh, is behind tape necessarily or how to do it right. I just like tape it until it feels better and that worked for me. Um, <laughs> that worked for me. And I've rested a lot in the last two weeks, especially maybe climbing a handful of times, so, hi. Do not take your recovery advice from Caroline. That is for sure. <laughs> Thanks, right. babe. Um, uh, kind of a painful route in Burley, but I was really, really proud when it went down. Okay. Then go make another one. Ooh, I did not see that coming. Nice, hold it. Come on, dude. Yes. You got it. Come on. Ooh. Go. Recompose. Yeah, dude. Yeah. Come on. 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 Come on.